Hey there, today I will give you travel tips to help you be safe when you fly. These are safety precautions that are gonna get you through airport security, into your plane, and off to your vacation. If you're flying during Thanksgiving or the Christmas holidays, or if you are in an airplane during COVID-19, these safety measures are for you. I will show you practical ways you can pack your luggage and get through the airport in a touchless, contactless way that may give you peace of mind if you're worried about traveling right now. As we head into 2021, the coronavirus is still here, but you can still travel to many places being clean, safe, and responsible. If this video helps you, share it to our world. I am a Houston Pilot wife sharing travel tips to help you travel the globe without a worry in the world with my many mistakes that I have learned and watched people do over the 18 years that I've been married to a pilot. Click that bell so you will never miss a free travel video every week. Just so you know, I'm going to link a lot of travel tips videos, packing, holiday travel videos, new rule videos down in the description box below. You can hit the upside down triangle or show more and you will see all those links. One way to be safer in the airport is to download your airlines app so that you will have to touch fewer things in the airport. Do this at home and then you will also 24 hours in advance have a barcode that is on your phone. When you get to the ticketing agent or to the TSA security officer, you just hold up your ticket and you hold up your identification. In most airports, you no longer have to put your barcode of your phone on the security scanner machine. You just hold it up for the officer to see. Another thing you can do to be a little safer is to choose to go on a later flight. On your airline's app, you will receive a notification about 24 hours in advance saying your flight may be really full. Um, if you choose to go on a later flight another day or that, that same day, you can without any change fees any longer. I think most of the major airlines are no longer charging those change fees. Even in July though, one airline noted that only 3% of the people chose that safety protocol. Since COVID-19 is highly spreadable, the Transportation Security Administration rolled out new rules to help their frontline officers and you as passengers. These new safety measures are going to continue throughout 2021 and most likely indefinitely. If you think of these new TSA packing rules positively, you actually have fewer things you have to do now and that keeps you safer. Well, you would be at a lower risk of touching germs. For example, a new rule that came out during the pandemic is that your wallet, keys, phone, belt, and large jewelry all stay inside your bags to go through airport security, the regular airport security. TSA PreCheck is, has not changed at all. So the only thing you would take out is your identification and your ticket. Once you show those to the officer, slide them in the outer pocket of your personal item bag. Then to be smooth and quicker, I just then pull out my liquids bag and my food bag. Here's one way that you can be less stressed through this process. I have packed both of these bags at home. And after I show my ID and ticket to the security officer, I walk to the conveyor belt. Those bags are easily accessible in the outside pocket of my suitcase, my carry-on suitcase. And for those of you who do not know about the new food rule, I'll link the video, but you have to take out any food like fish crackers, a sub sandwich, packaged or not, and put them all in a clear bag and they have to go in the gray bin with your food bag, I mean your uh, liquids bag. But just do those at home. Pack the food in your baggie, a clear bag, doesn't matter what size, then pack your liquids bag at home. Have those in the outer pocket. When you get to the conveyor belt, put them both in the gray bin. It may sound like a lot, but if you do it at home, you are ready and you're gonna have no stress before your vacation starts in the airport. And then you just pull out your electronics and your shoes in regular security. Now let's talk about safer ways you can go through the airport. After security, there are usually restrooms. You're encouraged to wash hands with soap and water to be the safest, but now right outside of security, there are stanchions of a hand sanitizer there for you. So if you can't wash hands, at least do that. With that food bag, if you've packed food, just empty all of your food into your personal item bag and throw away that bag if you want to. The TSA officers are required to change gloves now after every pat down and if they have to touch your bags for some reason, like you made a mistake in packing or they wanna look at the coffee that they see in your bag, 
um, like they did for me. Even though I put my bag of coffee in the clear food bag, it still, for some reason, makes the security bell go off. But if they have to touch it, you can say or request, excuse me, do you mind changing your gloves before you touch my items? That's another way you can be safer. But if you have followed my travel tips and packed correctly, they don't need to touch any of your items now. If you do wanna wear gloves or eye masks, you can, but it's not required. The TSA security officers might want to look inside your gloves, but it's no big deal if you don't wear them, I don't think. Another way you can be safer in the airport is by bringing a tub of antibacterial wipes, but to save space, I suggest that you use my travel tip of splitting the antibacterial wipes into baggies. You can also now bring your own bottle of hand sanitizer up to 12 ounces. Now that, this summer, it was a little hairy. My friends in Ohio got stopped because they had a six ounce bottle of hand sanitizer. And I believe the TSA website has now changed its wording. Always take screenshots if you're researching your airline or the TSA site, just in case someone gets persnickety with you. You can show them what the website says. And I will link the TSA part that I'm talking about. But it says now in the wording that you are allowed a bottle of hand sanitizer up to 12 ounces. The travel tip about that and the rule is that it now has to be screened separately from your liquids because it's bigger than the 3.4 ounce container rule. So you have your liquids bag and your food bag and then if you bring a 12 ounce hand sanitizer bottle, you need to put that in the gray bin by itself. It can go in a clear baggie if you want to, but it needs to be separate from everything else. Do not even leave that hand sanitizer bottle in your liquids bag. I will link the video down below in the description box. It's just for the regular security, but it will just list all of the new rules for you. But remember, just do it all at home. Let's talk about what you're required to wear through the airport and in airplanes now. The cloth face coverings are required and these disposable kinds are considered cloth. Remember that all airlines will give you one if you left it at home or um, can't find your mask. And here are two mask rules that came out in the end of 2020. One is that the K90 N95 masks that have the vent in them are no longer allowed in airplanes. Your particulates can escape through that hole. And two is you must have a cloth face covering first. Like you cannot only wear a face shield. You have to wear the cloth face covering and then a face shield if you want to wear the face shield or the eyeglasses or anything like that. But the one requirement is that you have that cloth face covering on first. I will link the woman I get my mask from. She's only on Instagram, but they are the only cloth face coverings that I have found that I can wear my reading glasses without them fogging up. Now you've arrived at your gate and you have space to social distance there. There are now plexiglass shields in front of all the ticketing agent counters and the gate agent counters there at your gate. And I believe you still have to touch your phone boarding pass to the little scanner to get onto the airplane. You don't have to hand them your phone or hand them a ticket now. When you board your airplane, flight attendants are now giving you free antibacterial wipes. When you get to your seat, put away your suitcase and your personal item and wipe down the tray table, the armrest, the seatbelt buckle, that is an often neglected or forgotten place to wipe. But remember that all airplanes now are cleaned by cleaning crews between every flight, even the lavatory. And a lot of the major airlines are using the electrostatic spray that gets to the untouchable areas that are in the airplane seats and around it. I know Amazon does sell an airplane seat cover. I will link it just in case you are just guaranteed that you think that will help you but i thought that was kind of uh interesting that that's for sale now if you're traveling with kids remember that you can give them baggies of the antibacterial wipes and they can help or at least wash their hands with the antibacterial wipe once you've sat down i have a video full of travel tips using plastic baggies that i will link for you being on the airplane is really less dangerous than being in your local grocery store. The airflow goes down really fast. The airplane seats are pointing forward, which actually helps stop the spread of your particulates. The air inside the airplane is recirculated with fresh air every couple of minutes. And the major airlines use HEPA filters, which are the same air filters that are in hospital emergency rooms. 
We flew four times over the summer and I've flown three times this fall and I have never felt safer inside that airplane. But we all know that even while using or taking all these safety precautions, we can still catch a cold or the flu virus. There are other coronaviruses we can catch. There is a responsibility that we have to take the risk, whether or not we want that rotisserie chicken from Costco badly enough where we will wear a mask and risk it just to get that Costco chicken. For our family, we felt safe enough this summer and even now to be in an airport and in an airplane traveling because we are okay with taking the risk of maybe catching this virus. But it is a serious risk that you have to weigh for you and your family. One thing to know ahead of time is that airlines are not serving like other drinks and snacks on board airplanes or flights that are less than 250 miles. And that's about two hours in length. So you may want to bring a water bottle from home that's empty and then fill it up inside the airport or just buy something at most of the stores or restaurants that are now open again. And remember, you can also pack your own food and snacks. Most airlines will stop blocking the middle seat by the end of November or January. I know Southwest is going to start selling the middle seat in the end of November, and then JetBlue and Delta are going to start in January. United has been selling the middle seats um, for a few months now. The airlines are seeing that there are enough people willing to take that risk of being in a full airplane that it is okay for their family to do that so they are going to re return to selling them and blocking a middle seat does not keep you six feet away from someone so i think it was just to help make people feel safer to help them travel again. I did notice on United's website that they are now offering at rapid COVID tests from the San Francisco airport to their Hawaii vacation destination spots. So you will find out the day of your departure if you want to do that rapid COVID test right then, or you can do it the day before. Their website also said that in the Newark airport, they are offering a free rapid COVID test to London just until from November 16th until December 11th, I believe. Yes, that's right. All of the airline websites have a COVID page. That was the only one that I could see about the ones in the airport, but be sure to go to your airline and look at their COVID page. It's very helpful. You are the one who has to know what that state or other country is um, requiring you for COVID testing and quarantining. So you have to take that responsibility and finding it out on your airline website or like the State Department. So I have shared ways that you can still live life to the fullest by being clean and responsible. All of these safety precautions are ones that I would feel comfortable doing to get me on an airplane to a vacation or to my family again. If you are really worried about something, please leave me a comment below and so I can ask my husband or maybe have a future video about it to help ease your mind. Thank you for your time of watching this video and happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year.